we have to stand by the principle that that's uh, the point. Now, at federal, I mean, state level, uh, there's also been a lot of talk about the growth of the budget. You know, the state budgeting and federal budgeting, for that matter, are based on several fundamental principles. There aren't really the three moving parts in the government budget. Three parts, that's it. Taxes, spending, and debt. That's it. Anything else that anybody tells you about the budgeting, state level, that's all there is. If you don't control spending as a matter of principle, inevitably you must be at debt or you must raise taxes. Democrats don't care about that. They spend this money and they know that one of the other two will inevitably follow. They don't care. We have to talk about these issues out there in the community and talk about the controlling of spending. Now, you know, when I was governor, we added uh, 200,000 new jobs, and we created a really good system. There was a good economy at the beginning, and we were riding it along, we were boosting it up the top in the tank by adding new jobs and opportunities and growth in the community. Well, the revenue is going to go up, and you're going to have the capacity to spend more money. I assure you at this stage, at the federal and state level, they will spend it all. All of it. And as a matter of fact, the usual request by the congressmen and the legislators is to triple what the budget might be. So a process has to happen where you actually go through and begin to address making some choices. And fundamentally, we have to demand the government make choices and not continue to go back into new money. And the flaw that we saw with Mark Warner was he disguised the fact that the economy was coming back and raised taxes. He raised taxes when he said that he was None of the money went to transportation. But these, these, are the, these are the fundamental problems that we have. We have to just recognize that we have to, at some point, begin to, to demand that the community and the leaders that are sent from the communities make choices about how you spend and how you want to spend. You can control spending, you can control taxes, and you can reduce debt. And that's what we have to do. We Republicans understand it, we live by it. That's our principle. We've got to talk about it. The Guess what? There's only one group of people who can talk in the community about what's right and what's wrong. It's us. That's it. Right? We're the leaders. Well, what are we doing here on Saturday morning, right? If you're doing something else, couldn't we? We're the leaders. And people, your friends, your community, people in your churches, people in your civic clubs, they look to you for leadership in politics and they know you come around on Saturday morning and they know that you do the work in the community for the elections and they respect your opinion. And so as we go forward, they will rely upon your guidance as we do this critical thing, Mr. Chairman, to what's doing right now. Okay, I'll, I'll do one more. I don't want to keep you off. I impose on you. You want to support me? <laughs> uh, I know it's a ways down the road, but uh, based on all the great values of the Republicans that uh, you just spoke up and you spoke up, um, what presidential candidate looks good to you right now? Well, I was in that race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll answer your question last, but uh, I really like being in the presidential race. I was very comfortable with my track record, my background, relative to the other candidates. I knew that there that the Republican Party wants to nominate a conservative group. They really did want to nominate a conservative if they possibly can. And secondly, they want to win. Uh, this is an interesting year, of course. Uh, it could be every presidential election is a pivotal year. It's been a long time since I saw a candidate like Hillary Clinton have a chance to actually be the President of the United States. I don't think that Hillary Clinton's going to be very appealing in the state of Virginia for anybody to run with her people. This is an important moment uh, for us as we go forward. Um, so, you know, I, where are you going on the question? Tell me a question. <laughs> I, I got off on Hillary. Uh, <laughs> who do you like? Who do you like? Okay, I'll, I'll avoid it again. <laughs> Um, I had a chance to get up there and see all these folks, and uh, a chance to, to meet with them. I'm going to you up on that. Uh, I, I know them all. Uh, they're all distinguished uh, men, uh, and actually they're all distinguished men and women, actually, that are running at the national level uh, for, for both parties. I, I think we have to understand direction and program and philosophy. 
philosophy in terms of uh, trying to choose who we think we want to choose. I know all of them. I can tell you stories about almost all of them, uh, and I recognize this. I think that we ought to nominate a conservative and run a conservative, if we possibly can. Uh, who that might be right now, I just don't I think the jury's out, to be frank, as to who's going to offer the best possible program for the Republican Party. Uh, but I, I may be too cynical about this, but it's a lot about money. It requires years and years of preparation in order to put together a finance. I'm going to come back to this point. It's very simple. Everybody here this morning, you've got to understand this is very critical. It takes years to get a system together to raise the money to run for any federal office. And for the presidency, it is awesome because you have to have the numbers. Now, Ron Paul is out here and he's raising money right now from small donors. That's exactly the right thing to do. You have to have people who will raise money for you. And there are candidates who are doing that, and we can see that some are more successful. So bottom line is, I'm being direct with you, I haven't picked a candidate. I know them all, I have a chance to review them all, I haven't picked a candidate. Uh, I think it's, it's more suitable for me to ask myself what I can do uh, to aid the people of Virginia and the people of the United States. What can I do? And make a good decision about that. And then come to good men and women like you and new people like that. Know, and ask you to really pitch in and do the right thing for the state of Virginia and for the people of the United States in this time of crisis. Uh, the future really does rest this coming year. The direction of the country very much rests in the opinion this coming year. And so that's why I'm so happy for Roxanne and I to come down and spend time with our old friends and meet new friends. And I look forward to working with you hand in glove, step by step, as we go forward, we begin to win again in the state of Virginia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Governor, thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for your remarks. Uh, just, just a couple of comments. I want to just recognize and, and thank you for your thanks of us. All the volunteers, all the folks that have those kitchen table talks with our family and knock on doors and stuff the envelopes. You know, I, I wish more Republicans in elected office had that attitude toward their volunteers. Uh, one particular member of the Senate of Virginia doesn't have that attitude. He serves part of the uh, part of the county and he, he views us as insignificant because we're just serving those thankless jobs that are handed to us. They are offered to us. We do take them gladly. gladly. We do do them with little or no thanks, but we do it because we want to elect people like you to public office. So thank you for that recognition.